Hello and welcome. In this workshop, we will demonstrate how to use the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight Geometry Workflow to generate a simulation-ready mesh that can be used to study the external aerodynamics of a generic aircraft geometry. Specifically, we will focus on creating local mesh refinement zones and adding boundary layers with a specified first cell height. Let's get started. Launch ANSYS Fluent in meshing mode. For this demonstration, double precision is enabled and four processes are engaged for meshing. Once Fluent meshing launches, select Watertight Geometry Workflow. In the Import Geometry task, leave all the settings to default and load the provided geometry file. Here, we have the fluid domain around a generic aircraft geometry. Only half of the model will be used with the central plane set to a symmetry boundary condition to reduce the resource requirement during the simulation. Next, set would you like to add local sizing option to yes in the add local sizing task. We will be adding a face size control to the trailing edge of the wing to ensure this relatively small and sharp feature is accurately resolved during meshing. To do that, select face size under size control type and set target mesh size to 0.5 mm. Leave select by to label and pick wing underscore le and wing underscore te from the list and select add local sizing. The leading edge surface is also included to ensure that the wing curvature is accurately resolved. Next, we will add local refinement regions. These regions are nothing but BOIs that resemble the shape of the selected object. Let's now see how we can set up this task. Right click on the add local sizing task and select create local refinement regions from the insert next task menu. For this workshop, we will be using the offset surface local refinement region. In the create local refinement regions task, change the type to offset. Set a mesh size of 2 mm. With select by set to label, select the fuselage wing, wing underscore le and wing underscore te objects. The specified mesh size will act as a soft sizing control to create the surface mesh on the selected objects. Since the aircraft is oriented in the X direction, we can leave the flow direction to X. In this workshop, we will set the defeaturing size to 20 mm, which will be used to wrap the selected objects and create a rough shape. Two types of BOIs can be created using the offset surface method, boundary layer levels and wake levels. The boundary layer levels are surfaces created by scaling the surface of the selected geometry equally in all directions with respect to the centroid of the selected geometry. Set the boundary layer height to 200 mm and boundary layer levels to 2. The boundary layer height defines the offset distance of the farthest boundary layer from the geometry. The boundary layer levels parameter defines the number of regions that are created within this height. If more than one level is specified, each level will have equal width but a different mesh size. Wake levels are like the boundary layer levels except that they are not equally scaled in all the directions. Set wake levels to 2. The offset distance for each of the wake levels is calculated using the wake growth factor and cross wake growth factor which control the offset in the downstream and cross wake directions respectively. We will leave these values to their default. 
for both the boundary layer levels and the wake levels, the mesh size parameter is used to define the sizing of each level, which increases by a factor of 2 between successive levels. Since we defined our mesh size as 2mm, the BOI sizing for the boundary layer levels will be 4mm and 8mm, and for the wake levels will be 16mm and 32mm. Click Create Local Refinement Regions to finalize the setup and execute the task. In the Generate the Surface Mesh task, set minimum size to 1mm and maximum size to 500mm. Set the curvature normal angle to 12 degrees to make sure all the curved features on the aircraft are accurately captured. Click on Generate the Surface Mesh. In the Describe Geometry task, select the geometry consists of only fluid regions with no voids as the geometry type and leave the rest to default and execute the task. In the Update Boundaries task, since the labels were predefined during the CAD phase, Fluent automatically assigns the appropriate boundary condition based on label name. No changes are required here and we can continue to the next task. Since there is only one fluid region in our model, this is correctly identified as the fluid by the meshing algorithm. No changes are required here either and we can move on to defining the boundary layers. Set Add Boundary Layers option to Yes. We will use the last ratio method to grow the boundary layer mesh from all the walls in our fluid region. Set Offset Method Type to Last Ratio. In addition to providing the option of transition ratio that allows the user to control the size difference between the last layer of the boundary layer mesh and the core mesh, it is also possible to define first height which allows the user to control the Y plus value of the mesh. Set this input to 0.05 mm. To ensure the boundary layer flow behavior is accurately captured, it is a common practice for external aerodynamic simulations to use a high number of boundary layers. A value of 10 is a good starting point. Select Add Boundary Layers button to execute the task. Now we are ready to generate the volume mesh. In this demo, we will use the polyhex core fill with method to fill the core of the fluid volume with hexahedral cells, which are connected to the boundary layer mesh through polyhedral cells. The minimum cell length and maximum cell length values are automatically populated based on the previously defined local and global sizing controls and are sufficient for our purpose. Hit the Generate the Volume Mesh button to create the volume mesh. The generated mesh has a total of approximately 1.9 million cells with a mesh quality of 0.15. Looking at the mesh, the boundary layer levels and the wake level BOIs created using the local refinement region task are clearly distinguishable from the rest of the mesh due to the finer cell sizing used in these regions. That brings us to the end of this workshop.